Get on with it. Oh, it's an advert. Hey, remember Light Disc 64 back from issue 19? It's back in club form. I actually found an interview with one of the guys behind this. It was Jason Finch, the guy who did all of the technical stuff for Commodore Format. I'll link to it. Oh, and if you think this is all a bit drab and quiet, it's quite deliberate. A few minutes in they do this. Which is nice. Darts, or to be more specific, John Lowe's Ultimate Darts. Except not, because they did a second version. Yes, there were a surprising amount of darts games for the 8-bit machines. And they all worked in exactly the same way. The only interesting difference between this one and all of the others is that there's actually a real mode as opposed to the arcade mode. In real mode, you play real darts on your real dartboard at home and punch the score into the computer and play against the computer opponent that way. Hmm, looking a little jaundiced there, mate. Also, system font, the sure sign of a quality game. Yes, there were tons of darts games knocking about for the 8-bits, and they all work in the following way. You have a cursor, it wobbles around erratically, you press fire vaguely where you want it to go, which is an interesting uh, simulation of the usual drunken ambience I play darts in. And I'm making a worse fist of this than I am uh, playing actual darts, which I am terrible at. I'm not sure that my reactions are just shot these days. Yes, every single darts game work like this, and this is not the best one. I would be amazed to know if darts games are still a thing. I mean, how, how on earth would you work it with a mouse or something? I have no idea. Anyway, on to the next one. There's much more interesting than this floating around. Hagar the Horrible, the demo. Another weird one, this. Um, I don't think it came out over here. I think it came out in Germany, apparently, but never over here, the full version. Oh, and don't punch that passcode in wrong. Otherwise, the whole thing resets and you have to load it up again, which from tape took about three minutes. Yes, nice little platformer, this. Charge shots, different weapons. Nicely animated little sprite. I like the way his uh, horns wobble around. I'm honestly not sure if Hagar the Horrible is still going. I never read it back in the day. I can tell you over here he used to advertise Skull Lager, which even as a teenage boy learning the wonderful world of booze for the first time, you knew was absolute piss. It's a little bit flaky, this. I'm hoping that it got fixed up in the full version. Oh, I'm not going to have to censor that, am I? Am I? What am I going to do? Make her even more pixelated? Yeah, it's a little bit flaky. Yeah, nice leap of faith there. Big enemies sort of pop into an out of existence at the end of the uh, screens and everything. And the jumping physics is a little ropey. Also, half the enemies you can just studiously ignore and leg it from. Now, that key we picked up a while back is all important, as it means we can actually use the doors. Doors do. You can also. Yeah, doors enter you to the shop and the tavern later on and will also teleport you around the level. 
I have a nasty feeling this bit here is an inescapable death pit, so points off for that. Oop. Oh, hell. Round we go again. Yeah, the air physics in this is this is weird. You can you have control when you're going up, but once you start coming down, you don't at all. He just plummets in a straight line downwards. Careful now. Right, ranged weapons for this one. Ah, oh, hell. Thanks for that big leap of faith. Another problem. The doors that teleport her around the world slowly scroll till you get to the destination. I mean, I couldn't understand why they did it, so you can sort of manage to figure out where you are where you are on the map. But some of the journeys are ludicrously long. You just end up staring at the map for ages. Here we here we are in the top right. And we'll bravely run away from this fella. I do like Hagar's animation here. With his shield wobbling around and his helmet going, as it were. Leaps of faith again. Tavern will stock you up on food and uh, drink and things. Also, there's a gambling game built in there that's meant to be a dice on the bottom right there. Dice. Die. I can never remember which one's which. That door there takes you on an even longer and more pointless journey, so I'm going to studiously ignore it. And gently across here. And away into the final screen. I'm not sure whether this is meant to be some sort of boss fight. Because you have to kill everyone before you can progress. Which requires a lot of flying crow stabbing. Oh, thanks. Slicks, the demo! It's really nice music. Oh, okay, I have to do a qualifying lap. Hang on, I'll cut this out. Well, stuffed that up, didn't I? Now, here's the nice thing about this. There's actually a sort of challenge mechanic where you can challenge other players, and if you beat them, you get to take their car. Bonus points for female driver, less bonus points for the fact that she's the worst one and she's in a pink car like Penelope Bloody Pit Stop.
yes, it's, well, if you've ever seen any sort of overhead racer, it's pretty much that. Your super sprint, your championship sprint, your super, super off-road racer with Ivan Ironman Stewart. And there's an obscure one. And one of these days I'll find an 8-bit racer that doesn't sound like a lawnmower. Today is not that day. Anyway, let's see if I can uh, replicate my incredible feats from qualifying. Oh. But wait, there were two tapes this month, and this is the big release. Saracen Paint, the fully fledged art package. Nice features, mouse and joystick support, not that I saw a C64 mouse ever, and surprisingly quick. Unfortunately, I can't draw for Toffee, so I can hardly show it off. It does come with some example pictures though, so, as is tradition, it's time for... The Gallery. Thank you. 